Now, strep A isn't new, is it? it? It's a common infection that children often pick up. So should we be more cautious as parents or is it a bit of fear mongering on the part of the media? Difficult to say fear mongering when the, you know, you've had these cases of really serious and, and unfortunately fatal infections. So, of course, uh, what we're seeing is coinciding with a whole series of other respiratory infections. So, unfortunately, they all start with fairly common symptoms. So uh, for someone to go through the year without a sore throat is, of course, very, very difficult. Uh, but not knowing whether it, it is just the common cold or whether it might turn into uh, either scarlet fever or something far worse. So of course, parents are going to be concerned when they're seeing it happen around the country at the moment. So what should parents look out for? Again, it's parents will know their kids and so they'll know what they're like, particularly once they reach school age with, with these more seasonal infections, although perhaps younger kids may not have had quite so many over the last couple of years. But it's really a sore throat that doesn't go away. And then so 12, maybe 48 hours after that, uh, scarlet fever is characterized by the, by the rash, starts on the sort of chest and, and stomach and spreads. Uh, sort of flushed skin, but it feels quite rough, so often described as sandpaper. So at that point, that's probably an indication that this could be um, the, the, the strep, and we, we know levels are quite high at the moment, and that's really when you should be looking to, to seek um, advice from the, from the GP. At the moment, I think we would pre prescribe antibiotics, not only to, to stop the infection from turning into something more nasty, but of course to stop that case from being spread to others um, mm -hmm. to try and quell the amount of disease we're seeing at the moment. Now, of course, one theory, of, and I think it is fairly easy to, to, to stack up, is that we took young children who would normally, toddlers and babies who would normally be crawling around the floor and in nurseries and seeding their immune system and their microbiome with all of these different germs and bacteria. We stuck them in houses, we put masks on them, we put hand sanitizer on them, and they've all got immune systems now that are struggling to cope with this situation. What, what can we do about that as parents? Very little now, uh, to, to be honest. We were seeing that uh, kids are, are being re-exposed to, to, to germs and, and viruses and bacteria as, as you know, contacts return to normal. Uh, so we're going to see a rebound in infections. There's, there's very little we can do about that. But you know, we've had peak years for, for, for Group A strep um, for, for decades now, 2017, 2018 was perhaps the last high one. Uh, and unfortunately, four, four youngsters died during that year. So this is not something we've, you know, we've never seen before. The seasonality has been disturbed somewhat. So we are now seeing a peak um, in the autumn, whereas normally we'd see it maybe more late uh, winter, early spring. And of course, that's coinciding with the other respiratory infections. But not only perhaps makes it more difficult to spot whether it's a cold or potentially uh, a strep infection, but perhaps it also means you've got higher levels of strep at a time when our airways are under attack and perhaps being, being being disturbed by viral infection more than they would otherwise. So this is something we're just going to have to work our way through, unfortunately.